I see like being a competitor, it kind of, you have like very high highs and very low lows. If I could change one match, one that comes to mind is um, probably Berlin, the first round of playoffs against Nine Pandas. I was playing Tidehunter against Ramses Voigt, and the reason for it is I just feel like that was like a really easy match, like we're so much better than them actually. And uh, like I was destroying my lane and then I just, I just played so bad the, the rest of the game. That, that was supposed to be a free win, then we win that one, and then, you know, there is no more insta lose after that, so we would probably do well at, well at Berlin. Yeah, I don't know. I just made some like silly mistakes. That's my that's my specialty. So you know, just don't make silly mistakes. No, I think when I came to the team in 2020, I was a bit young. I was under the emotions. Во время игр, во время тренировок я был очень вспыльчивый. Со временем это у меня ушло, я как-то это перерос. Я больше начал понимать, что в принципе такое командная игра, командная коммуникация, как нужно коммуницировать, как не нужно. Я был ну, таким средним аварейшим игроком, без опыта, но спустя года, я думаю, я стал очень хорошим игроком как именно тиммейт. Мне один момент запомнился. Это была третья карта Лима Мейджера, когда я играл на линии против... Мы играли против Shopify Rebellion, где я играл на линии, и я не нажал там БКБ, я помню. И мы из-за этого проиграли, в принципе, карту. А это была третья карта за топ-6. Я думаю, если бы мы ее выиграли, мы бы, скорее всего, прошли дальше или выиграли турнир. У меня до сих пор возникают флешбеки с этого момента, когда в меня катится Тускар, я не нажимаю, и мы проигрываем. Я тогда был в тильте после этого момента. I guess when we play against the Fnatic T10, I had to play on lower bracket. I was a little nervous. Cause it was like a BO1 and I always hate BO1s because it just in my head it was really like I don't want to get last place again I don't want to get last place again like my last TI and I think I didn't play bad but I also didn't play very well and when you're a TI you, you really gotta clutch the game through different angles you know it's not just click, clicking the buttons at that point it's like you have to contribute somewhere that's gonna be key and crucial to winning um, and I didn't do it you know I was very average so I went to TI7 and then I didn't go to TI until TI10. It felt like three years had passed, the same result. It was really frustrating. I was really like sad towards myself because uh, it meant like, well, this whole journey, you know, to get to the same spot. But, you know, that was really like, that's how I felt when I lost at least. I think the one crucial thing I've learned from then is to remind myself why I play the game and to every day just appreciate that I get to play Dora. And it's a game that I re I'm really passionate about. When I'm in that mindset, I really play my best and I'm the best teammate that I can be. I was coaching VP at last TI, right? And I joined also right before TI, if I remember correctly, like maybe like three months prior to TI. And before that, I was a player. Uh, I would say every player, or not even player, every human being goes through the time of your life where you just need to take some pause from things you were doing before, right? Just uh, and a mental breakdown happens, you're like, okay, I just need some time to be with myself and just live a life. And then you're like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> time to come back to good stuff. The biggest lesson or like the biggest thing that might win us a lot of games is confidence. It's actually confidence, especially in our team. It's not like we are not confident in ourselves, but we are not showing this confidence to other teams or like we are not bringing this confidence into the game. And we can play 10 screams, 2000 Dota games, and then we come into official game and like, okay, hey, what to do? We're like chickens running around. Come on guys, we, we did it. We did it a lot of times. That's why we played this game. That's why we love this game. Let's have fun, etc. And this is 
I would say what is like the biggest thing in this team. That's what I hope we will bring into TI. I'd say last year the the role that Matu kind of figured out for herself towards the towards the end of his tenure is something that I've I kind of carried that torch a little bit this year. I think uh, kind of stepping into a bit more of a leadership kind of kind of role. Uh, obviously taking control of uh, of drafting and stuff like that, but also kind of trying to get our team on the same page and kind of just uh, focused on playing the way we want to play. Uh, and I think that was something that Matu was very good at. Uh, he's he's very good at playing his own kind of style of Dota. The first teams I played on in my career, I had very strong personalities. Playing with PPD, playing with Fear, playing with Artur, Sumail, and obviously Team Secret, the second team, playing with like S4, Kuro, and Poppy as my, you know, second team, really. And there wasn't really room for any more. Uh, so I think I kind of early on learned to and, you know, just like adapt to the space and kind of just uh, try to mold myself into the group. I think Puppy has probably been the, the way he sees the game. It's just, it's just way different. There's a lot of good Dota players. There's a lot of good competitive Dota players as well, but not many of them can establish that kind of touch on, on the game, I think. Uh, and, you know, maybe, maybe that's something that I haven't been able to do as, as much, but I think uh, when it comes to leadership and, you know, um, captains and stuff, I think uh, at least I'll try my best to, to step into the room. Muy emocionado, o sea, fue mi primer, mi primer team fue en Seattle y en realidad me sentí muy emocionado. Creo que fue la parte más emocionada de mi vida en el otro competitivo, eh, porque fui parte de el primer equipo sudamericano de clasificado mundial. Entonces como que había mucho, mucha emoción y a la vez muchos nervios, ya que era la primera vez que competíamos internacionalmente y nada, como que llegamos al TI. Dimos lo mejor de nosotros, pero lamentablemente nuestra falta de experiencia y los nervios también es como que jugaban en contra, ¿no? Y veníamos jugando con equipos que venían jugando ya casi siete TI, si no me equivoco. Entonces fue como que nuestra primera vez y fue una bonita experiencia. Creo que yo comencé a ser capitán a partir de 2018. Uh, en realidad lo que pasó fue que en Sudamérica yo sentía que la gran mayoría de personas jugaban muy bien Dota pero tipo los capitanes no tenían una fluidez al hablar y no sabían comunicarse bien. Entonces yo sentía que tenía esa posibilidad, sentía que podía llegar a mis compañeros y podía como que hacer esa comunicación en la cual ellos se sientan cómodos, estén bien y, solamente, y solo necesitan jugar para ser un capitán en Sudamérica porque siento que es muy diferente ser capitán en Sudamérica que ser capitán en, en otra región. Entonces... Básicamente fue eso, que yo sentía que tenía las cualidades para poder liderar a un equipo aquí. Difference during the DBC season compared to like Riyadh and the Stream League, I think, to be honest, I think teams got ahead of us a bit in terms of meta. I think the, all the ramifications of the massive map, map size uh, patch weren't really truly felt until more recently. I think Riyadh was one of the first tournaments where people like that was started to be felt more. It just takes time for people to like truly understand some of these things and it's still being felt like people don't really understand the map even close to like they used to with the old one where everyone knew everything and it was like every game was like pre-planned, you know, five minutes, our game's over. It's not like that anymore. And I think we were honestly just a bit behind on some things and, and other people just, they got ahead of us. And so we're just playing catch up. And when you're playing catch up, as opposed to like, you're in a good spot and there's slight things you're tweaking, that perspective difference is like massive. And I think for the last two tournaments, we were in the perspective of we're trailing and we're like clawing to try to catch up people as opposed to being near the front and like maintaining that position. Weiku 
，所以，但是真正让我学到，我觉得肯定还是珍惜，无论是身边还是所有与自己共事过、共事过的，就是职业选手，还是现在身边所有的朋友吧。我觉得这些主要是最主要的。Let's go talk about the pain game here. We have a lot of good things about this team. For me, this team with these players in 2018, I mean, it's the, it's the greatest time for me, the Dota 2. I play against the best teams in the world. I mean, sometimes I lost, of course. Sometimes I feel sad. But to, to have a Weeha, I never expect me to have a player like Weeha, but I have this feeling like, Oh man, I miss everything about this year, really. It's like kind of sad for me because sometimes I'm gonna cry. I can't have, I have it well. I cry one time because I miss this team, I miss the players in, in this year. But I've, sometimes the, the, the players change after some years, all right? But that year, everyone for the team is like, it's a really good vibe. The last time I have in the pink game into this new team is like, it's kind of like everyone in the team is like your friend. KJ is my girlfriend, everyone is my girlfriend because we're gonna waste time together. We need to be friends. And after we need to be friends, we need to like understand each other to not be mad about some small things. So the, the least we're having this pain game is like everything we can, sh we can like fix. So my team is my girlfriend. I'm gonna waste my time with my guys. That's the feeling. That's a feeling I have at the last with the pen game because in that team, that time, we had a really good friendship. So I miss everything about everyone like in that year. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. It's my goal to be a stable team, to always be in top three teams and to perform really stable and good in group stage also because in my career it was like so many group stages that we was like tie bracket games and it's not it's very stressful to be honest and i <laughs> don't really like bbt have nothing to play for they've already secured first place in the groups now in bad boom we have a really stable way to make games easier and uh, we have a plan every game which uh, I feel like we lack in spirit. Um, I, when I was in spirit, it's my opinion. So that's why uh, in a, uh, I would say in a long way, we will perform more stable. I don't have as much fun as I had when you run home to, to click find match uh, to play on New Hero. But I really enjoy uh, the moments when I feel how team improve, when I feel that things we were working on uh, start to work, you know. I learned that discipline is the most important thing in Dota. Discipline beside the game and discipline in the game. I think this is the most uh, important uh, thing that I got through years. Let's talk about um, Kiyotaka. He's the youngest guy on this TI. I'm the oldest one, and he's the youngest one. Uh, Gleb has so big hero pool. Like, usually mid players have pool from seven to 10 heroes. Gleb can play any hero. This year for him is really, really good. He showed that he's one of the best players in mid lane. I really think that he will be uh, the best mid player in the history of Dota, maybe it's too early for this, <laughs> but he has a lot of time. This DPC, we managed to qualify to the first major in Lima. Uh, we didn't really do very good in there, and I kind of self-reflected afterwards, and I realized I have become complacent after winning TI, and now I didn't have as much of a drive, and I at or I at least didn't realize that I'm not putting as much effort as I did before. So that tournament personally woke me up and I try to like, you know, do better again. At the same time, we kind of like had a meeting after the whole TI run that, you know, at the end of the day, we all want to do this thing and we want to make sure that we 
are going to put as much effort as we did like all the other previous years. Because we haven't really won anything big. We are still trying our best and, uh, you know, trying to be like proud of the work we are putting in. Like we, we like to tell ourselves we are the hardest working team. That, that itself gives you like a confidence that like you can proudly say that. And that's kind of like one of the fundamentals we always had. Dora, at the end of the day, is obviously all about mechanical skill. But on top of that, you need to be very easy human to work with. I think not only in Dora, just in every team environment, you just need to be able to compromise and you need to be like very understanding and have a lot of patience. When I was younger, I didn't really understand this part. And uh, so yeah, that, that, that at least would be like a biggest advice that I would give to myself to just be more patient and be more understa un understanding. I feel like the DPC season for us honestly went much better than it did previously. That We improved a lot and I was pretty content with our results. What changed between the first two qualifiers and the third one, I think one, we got a sports psychologist to help us and it really improved our mindset and our like mental capacity to play the game and then we honestly just got better as a team throughout the season like we always felt like we were able to qualify and able to perform but something was just holding us back and we were able to push through it I, I think the best way to describe it is kind of what Edward, Edward would tell us this that like we need to connect with the human side of our teammates and not value them based on their performance. It was a lot more fun when you realize you're playing with people and not just like numbers and robots. You also tend to play a bit better together when you realize that too. Biggest, like not less of what experience that I'm grateful to have is just basically like the coming together of many cultures on a LAN event. I think it's one of the greatest things ever. When you go to any LAN, like any major, you get people from all around the world. Now, especially also South American Dota, you have a lot of uh, Brazilian players, you have Chinese players, of course, and you have all these cultures coming together. And this feeling of getting to know these cultures a bit better and everybody being united and like playing a video game is something in my opinion really beautiful. Like in the beginning, I remember when I was in my first major, it was Arlington Major last year I was so scared of Chinese teams like we played against Team Aster and it was the first Chinese team I ever like we ever played in a professional match online and offline and I was really like respecting that team because like it was in my head oh this is a Chinese team they play different order they're different it's a different region right that you didn't play for a longer time but then like honestly like simple things like seeing them at breakfast and everything and talking to them a little bit having a little funny chat made everything so much more connected I think there's not that many difference between the different cultures that many people maybe even think in the beginning and I think to me some Something that I uh, find very, very precious and I really uh, appreciate to have the opportunity to get this experience. My 类似这样的话吧比较轻松地拿到了第二枚